Hey everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the assembly of my new gaming computer. I'm going to focus on the CPU, the CPU cooler, and the motherboard. My motherboard is a Gigabyte Z690 Aris Ultra. LGA 1700 is the name of the socket, which fits the 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs. Now, this motherboard was released while the 12th gen CPU is out. So I had to flash the BIOS to enable it to recognize the 13th generation Intel CPUs. But that went very smoothly, I'll walk you through that. Another kind of compatibility issue that I ran into, the CPU cooler I used was the Thermalrite Frost Spirit 140. This CPU cooler didn't come with the mounting brackets for the LGA 1700 socket. So it out of the box can't be used on motherboards and CPUs that fit the LGA 1700 socket. So you just have to buy a special mounting adapter from Thermalrite that lets you use this CPU cooler on motherboards of this socket. So first up is how do I update the BIOS of this motherboard to recognize the 13th gen Intel CPUs? You can actually do this with no CPU installed due to the Q Flash Plus feature on this motherboard. I'll link to a much more comprehensive video in the description. But in summary, all you need to do is make sure the main 24 pin power connection on your motherboard is powered by your PSU, as well as the eight pin CPU power. And then use a pre-prepared flash drive with the updated BIOS file on it, plug it into the special BIOS USB port and press the Q flash button and then wait four or five minutes. You can see by this light here on my motherboard that the motherboard's got power. And so all I do is press this little button down here that says Q flash. Your power supply fan should start up. The light should blink. And four or five minutes later, your motherboard BIOS should be updated to recognize the 13th gen Intel chips. Before installing the processor, I'm going to start with my M.2 solid state drive. Just get that installed. In this motherboard, you have to remove this metal heatsink, which is held in place by one screw on the left side and uh, a little latch on the right side. Make sure you remove the plastic covering for the heatsink so this drive can contact the heatsink directly, as well as the plastic cover beneath the SSD location. The M.2 drive should only go in one way. You click it in and it's totally normal for it to kind of stay tilted up like this until you put in the retaining screw to hold it down flat. Then you just need to return the heatsink back on top of the M.2 drive and screw that in. Now it's time for the processor. In my case, it's the 13600K i5. Same process would work for the i7 or i9 of the 13th generation. Remove the lever. You can leave the black plastic cover cap in place. Open your CPU. I'm using gloves here. You don't have to. I just don't want to get any oil on the surface of the CPU, which might interrupt heat transfer to the cooler. It should only go in one way, but you want to make sure you align the triangle on the lower left to the triangle on the lower left on the socket. Let gravity do most of the work, and the processor should just fall into place. Close the cover and replace the retaining pin. It might take some force and in the process of latching it, the black cover should pop off. And now your CPU is installed. Here's where we're gonna install the special mounting bracket for my Thermalrite Frost Spirit CPU cooler to adapt it to the, seven, the LGA 1700 socket. This part of course will be listed in the description. We start by placing the back plate on the back side of the motherboard and screwing in four standoffs on the front side. These will both retain the back plate as well as be the location for installing the bracket. These standoffs are actually, these standoffs actually have two sides. I didn't notice it at first, but there's one side with a black rubber cushion. That's the side that's supposed to go down against your motherboard to avoid scratching it. The cooler mounting bracket has these two arms, which span the distance between the standoffs on the top and the bottom of the motherboard. If you're using it to adapt to a different cooler, you may need them to be on the left and right of the motherboard, but the four standoffs are in a square orientation so they can be used either direction. Secure these arms with two screws each. Next up, I installed my memory. I do this before I install my cooler because the cooler is so big that it will actually cross over the top of the memory and it would be hard to put the memory in after the cooler. This motherboard can use the fancy fast DDR5 memory 
I went for two 16 gigabyte sticks for a total of 32 gigabytes. When using two sticks, make sure you read your manual. It will tell you in this case to put them in the second and the fourth slots, counting from left to right. Time for thermal paste. This is what conducts the heat from your CPU up to your CPU cooler. I bought some Arctic MX6 thermal paste, but this cooler does come with some thermal paste itself and probably works just fine. I like to get it started on a tissue and wait till the last minute to remove the plastic cap just to avoid any dust falling on my CPU. There's plenty of videos out there on how to install thermal paste. I just kind of went with whatever felt good with me in the moment, kind of like three dots plus an extra little smudge. Now that we've got our CPU installed, our mounting bracket installed, and our thermal paste on top of our CPU, it's time to install the cooler itself. Make sure this plastic sticker is removed so that, that shiny smooth metal surface can come into maximum contact with your CPU and suck away all that heat. Place it down on top of the CPU and then secure the two screws which connect to the mounting bracket arms you installed earlier. Go back and forth tightening each side bit by bit to ensure even distribution of the pressure. Next comes installation of the fans. The larger fan you put between the two towers. These uh, little wire clips are a little finicky, but you'll figure it out. You have to really stretch them to get them to connect into the fins of the cooling tower. I connected the biggest fan to the main CPU fan header. This is the header which your computer will make sure has a working fan. If the fan ever stops working, it will power down safely to avoid overheating your CPU. Then you install the secondary smaller fan on the intake side and that one will get plugged into the CPU optional fan header. You also could use the included splitter that comes with this cooler to connect both fans into the CPU fan header. All right, time to get that motherboard assembly installed in the case. I'm not gonna do a full video showing the rest of the build process, but just a couple key points. First of all, this case has eight normal standoffs that you can screw the motherboard into, and another standoff in the middle that instead of a screw hole has a pin. So when you're first installing the motherboard, make sure that that pin on that middle standoff comes up through the motherboard. That's how you know it's in the right place. Then you can take the eight screws included in your case to hold down the motherboard. It's good to get all the screws tightened partially before going back and retightening each one to the end. I only had an 140 millimeter exhaust fan on hand, and please forgive the horrible clashing colors. So I had to place it on the top of the case exhausting out. I'll probably get another 120 millimeter fan to exhaust out the back directly out behind the CPU cooler at some point. Unfortunately, it took a couple days for my GPU to get here. I ordered a RX 6800 XT, so I don't have video footage of me installing it, but look at the size of this absolute beast can of beans for scale. Because it's an overclock edition, it actually has space for three eight pin power connectors. I went ahead and did plug all of them in with separate cords from my PSU just to be safe. So after that, and in uh, making all the final connections to my front panel headers and my hard drives, the computer booted up fine. The BIOS update worked great. And one week later, I can say I am extremely happy with this build.